Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the um, the uh, council meeting, City of Nelson, May the second, twenty twenty two. Go ahead and call the meeting to order and give we'll have a word of prayer. Um, Steve, you want to the honors? Sure. Dearly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come together and have this meeting, Lord. We just invite you to give us your wisdom, us your understanding and knowledge. We pray that you would guide the city council meeting tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. James, would you lead us to the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll make a motion to approve it. Can I get a second? Second. Jane, Dave, is that you? Yeah. All in favor? Unanimous, thank you. Okay. We'll start with public appearance. Does anybody um, have anything um, with regards to the agenda that you would like to speak about tonight? Kennesaw Avenue to unlock the remaining funds. 
So it, it was it was just a it's just an oversight, but it yeah. will, it will get added to the county yeah. improvement. We matter of fact, we don't have the book out yet because we haven't voted on it. But it was it was in our work session. The other one, which I'm just repeating, is the stormwater project. We 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 should take initiative and go clean those up. So the county uh, to speak with Jeff Morton. The mm -hmm. county is supposed to come back with a to us with a um, with a, an ETA on getting that done. They've already done the um, the preliminary where they came out, checked everything out, went through everything, and now right. it was just you know a lot of stuff got held up because of COVID. They have, a lot of teams were down. Stuff like that, which is yeah. everywhere. I mean, even to get somebody in here to do a job for us has been hard. Getting people to come and bid a job because they don't—they just want the manpower right now. Yeah. They just did the bush hogging too. Yeah. That's the first before they do any drain clearing, they were going to do the bush hogging. Yeah. And that was just well, I mean, yeah. So it's the bush been hogging. It's been at there. least two years we haven't done a thing on it, and uh, I'm thinking relying on the county or the county is—they have their own challenges. We, it is, but I mean, we, if we're saving money, we have an IGA with them, I think it's good. I think it's I a good opportunity. That, but it hasn't happened, though, either, yeah. has it? And that's my point, is you need to be self-independent in a way that you manage your own situation. Obviously, you want to save money where you can, mm -hmm. uh, but those, several of those things were 100% plugged up. I mean, that should be, hair should be on fire somewhere, red flags should be waving, we need to do something. and. Uh, and uh, that's, that's my thought on that. Uh, and the last one was just to repeat from my previous uh, conversation about the capital improvement. Uh, I was reading the capital improvement program that you submitted a week ago, two weeks ago, whenever that was, uh, and it talked about sidewalks. And uh, the sidewalks were supposed to be done in 20, 2022. I think we discussed Before that, that it was 2017, done. and it goes back, I think, six years. What is it? We have 990-something thousand worth of uh, SPLOS projects that, that we've got in the, in the next four years, and those sidewalks are on it. I don't see them getting pushed. I mean, I don't. We, they're solid plans, so got a good council here. They've yeah. they've looked at it. They've agreed to all of it. And it's in our it's right. In our, it's on there. Just yeah. this is not moving yeah. forward. Yes, I was trying. Well, to I think you'll see some. Make it move forward. We we so so far we've spent five hundred and fifty plus thousand dollars worth of SWAS um, dollars in the last two and a half years. We've got another six hundred and something that we're looking at to spend this year yeah. before the year's end, and then we have nine hundred thousand plus on the book. Well, that's so, another, yeah. another question I Things have. have started to move. The capital plan that we looked at as a drag mm -hmm. uh, didn't have any of this finished with seven to eight hundred thousand dollars that we're going to spend over here on Kennesaw to do the sidewalk and to do the drainage issue. This project here. Okay. That should be in. I mean, in other words, if you were, oh, you let that off the capital improvement program. That means all the rest of the numbers are not valid. No, it's already been encumbered and already started paying for it. So that project's basically complete. But the project show off on the capital improvement plan. It was point. prior. Yeah, it's not prior to that one that you've seen. That that's going forward uh -huh. because that's already been encumbered and already been basically expended. So going forward, that you won't see you will, on that one that so you see. So the previous mm -hmm. capital improvement program would it show that money. Yes, it did. Oh, okay. And, and the only thing that you should see on Kennesaw Avenue is it should be now the painting for Kennesaw Avenue. Yeah, right. So that's right. what should be on there. That's what should be left. Mm -hmm. I would like to say something very positive about the council and the mayor and all the stuff that you've done. Is I, I see the Rebecca Lodge building uh, almost disappearing, as well as the uh, famous sheriff police office. Across the street, I hope that I did a good job. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate your comments. Okay. Anybody else have anything for um, for this meeting? Do you want me to do the yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Well, go ahead and let Kim Bar come up. Okay. Okay, so from our last meeting, we did, I didn't get a chance to uh, thank all the volunteers who helped with the Easter celebration, and I wanted to name out everybody who 
helped out with that to make it a wonderful celebration. And then a huge thank you to the city council members who attended, uh, David Hamby, Nathan Hamby, William Taylor, and James Queen were all there. Thank you for coming and offering your support. And then I want to thank Kelsey for helping out with the pre-event support. <laughs> and then of course, I wanted to recognize Mary Sonia Green for helping out so much and then donated prize baskets and provided overall direction and coordination uh, along with additional volunteer support from family and the grill and uh, just helped out so much. Your passion for the city is uh, appreciated very much. And then William Taylor helped out with Easter egg stuffing and set up and breakdown. <laughs> very much appreciated. Uh, Danny Morris from Trinity Church coordinated a group of volunteers to cook hot dogs and hamburgers for the event. Also provided DJ, face painting, picture booth, and helped out with general setup, which was amazing. And then I also wanted to recognize Laurel Lake Community Committee, uh, Alyssa Marathis, uh, for Easter egg stuffing, morning setup and event support, along with Leslie Hutcherson for some event coordination support. Uh, Wayne Tippins and Chris Lee from the Masonic Lodge came out and did a great job helping us set up tents and other morning setup for that event. Chad Jenkins from ICG uh, donated a large generator to power the bounce houses and DJ tent. And then we had other volunteers. Jody Chapman donated marketing support and had her three boys and another one of their friends help with uh, egg stuffing. <laughs> We had a, we did 2,035 eggs wow. for the event. Yes, <laughs> and then uh, Stacy Taylor helped out with the Easter egg stuffing and the event support, and Sue Cochran donated some Easter egg baskets and 200 eggs and helped with stuffing eggs too. Thank you so much, Sue. And then uh, we got the Cherokee County Fire Services uh, Sergeant Josh German and Firefighter Terry Randall Droke came out with their fire truck and gave out hats to the children. And then we had a vendor, and even though she she was part of the budget for it, she was great, she was wonderful. It's Jillian Gearing, she did from Rascal G Rentals. Uh, the bounce houses were great, huge hit. So I look forward to other celebrations in the future and just want to thank everybody for helping and your support. I do appreciate it. I want to take this time, too, to just say thank you for, for everything that you put into it, all the running around to get things done. It, it was it was definitely a success, and, and you helped make that. Um, I look forward to working with you on our uh, our movie nights. Yes. So, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else have anything? All right. I'll take that as a note. We'll move on to approval of minutes. Can I get um, a motion to approve the minutes from April the 11th, 2022? I'll make a motion. James? Second. Second. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Can I get a motion to approve the work session minutes for April the 19th, 2022? I'll make a motion to approve. Nathan? Second. David, all in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. All right. Department reports. Lieutenant Downey, would you like to come um, share? I would. Your report with us. I'd first like to say thank you to everyone who attended the town hall. Uh, we probably have the least amount of population in this area when it comes to Cherokee, but we had the largest town hall gathering across any of the other precincts in the county so i greatly right. appreciate that um mayor thank you for the the kind words and, and everyone else that attended but uh i think it just speaks volumes of how much we care about where we live um which makes my job a whole lot easier um with the crime report the only thing we had and we took care of this problem on the way up here um is we had two teams that have been riding from Nelson Ridge to, to Nelson Oaks on motorcycles and I received a couple of complaints about it on my way up here I drove into the neighborhood and on the whole year they come on the motorcycle so I got to visit some mom and dads and a teenager that uh, I think that will take care of that problem itself um, 
with the weather uh, warming up, I do want to caution everyone. Yeah, we do live in a small community, and like the sheriff said in our town hall, we want you to think you're in Mayberry, but that also depends on what we do and what you guys do as a, as a community. But um, when you start seeing individuals or vehicles that don't belong in your area, please call. Uh, make sure you lock your doors at night because the trend is across every county around Metro Atlanta. When the weather gets nice, we get people that want to wander in our neighborhoods. And they're going to do it. And I, I make the statement of evil seeks darkness. Okay, and so they're going to do it while we're asleep and, and things like that. But lock your car doors. That'll keep people from going in them. If you have any valuables in your vehicle, put them where they're not going to be seen. Um, and that's just some safety tips for everyone, including those that live in Pickens. Um, but when you see things out of place, please don't hesitate to call. Um, we do this job for a reason, and that's to keep the community safe. And you guys, like I said, in our town hall are the eyes and ears for us. So don't hesitate. Don't think you're bothering us. But uh, just call 911 when you see problems like that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Next up is Mayor's report. Um, we'll go ahead and start off with our resignations. We received a resignation from uh, Martha Shipton today. She's taking a job at Piedmont. We wish her well. Um, and she seems excited about it. She said her hours conflicted with her needs. So we hate to lose Martha. She was definitely an asset and, and she'll be missed. Next we have um, we have a resignation also from um, the maintenance guy, Jackie Plumley. Um, Jackie has accepted another position um, with a substantial raise of benefits. So we wish him well as well. We will be looking for a, another maintenance guy to replace him and we'll start put an ad in the, in the uh, Pickett's Progress and, and get that moving. Um, in the meantime, um, I, my suggestion is to see if uh, Ricky and um, can can use maybe Stephen and and his son. Uh, yeah his son to help out in, in the interim until we get things rolling anyway. So does anybody have a problem with that? No. Okay. Good deal. Um, I wanted to bring to your attention a hole on Kennesaw and School Street. Um, uh, there. It, I believe when you're coming down Kennesaw and you're turning onto School Street, um, it's on the right-hand side, and it looks like somebody may have put some concrete um, there for water to run off, but there's a hole about this big around. We've put some cones out there. When you look down in the hole, it is like a hole with about this much earth is all that's covered. So if somebody with a heavy something comes across that, their tire's just going to go straight in it. Um, there's a pipe that appears to be maybe I don't know, about this big around. Um, water, it's washed all the way around it and it's washed up under the road. So I know that that's your line, Nathan, uh, David. If you could just take a look at that. I, right down here. Which yes, side of the road is it on? It's on the right side of the road as you're turning onto School Street from Kennesaw. I think the covered in there and went all the way across. Well, the problem that I see is, is that there, it's, um, it's washed out really yeah. bad and it goes up under there and so I asked Kelsey to see would it be the DOT we brought in to take a look at that and see what kind of damage we have? The county maybe. Okay. My only concern is is it's right there at Kennesaw and and I don't know how much wash is under there. So we'll, we'll we just found that um, so we'll get them notified tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. Website meeting. I have a meeting scheduled with um, here at the city hall tomorrow um, regarding the website um, with Keith Johnson to go over um, the website and all the particulars. Um, making sure that we we're able to function, uh, the city's able to function with that website on our own until we can get somebody to to come in and take take it over. Right now it's just posting, um, we'd be posting our um, city pertinent information such as our agendas, our updates to our projects, um, the capital budget, the um, capital improvement budget once approved, the budget, the city budget once it's approved. So so there's, those are the things I'm looking at now. So we still can't pay the garbage bill and stuff like that. Not yet. Not you can until pay it through the NelsonPay.com website. You just can't access your account and check and verify balances. 
and it's it's probably not that that we won't be able to have that feature. It's just it needs to link to our software. Yeah, it's it, not linked. It's going to have to link to assist, and and we'll have to have somebody that can program that to do it. Somebody that probably works with cities and their websites. Like I don't know who Ball Brown's using, but I have reached out to them to see. I have reached out to um, over to. Um, well, let's get to see who they're using because if you go on their websites, I went and looked at a few of them. All their stuff is on there, so they're using somebody. So I thought maybe we get some names of some folks and, and then go that route and just get some information. I'll bring it back to you guys. Have you contacted Cherokee County and Pickens County? Have not contacted the counties yet um, about their websites. I went a little bit smaller. I know that um, they're, there's no telling who they use, but I imagine they use for what they do on their website versus what we would do on ours. Ours is such a smaller scale. I was I reached out to like Ball Brown and yeah. and to um, and we could probably reach out to Pickens. Um I think it's because the tax assessor. Okay. Who does it, Miranda? You can I mean, they got the same kind of stuff. Well, yeah, it just like so just because what he's saying okay. you can go on scale. check your your tax mm -hmm. and check the balance. For Pickens? Uh not right off hand. Okay, let's check. With I was going to contact the, the school as people that do their websites, and I, I was going to check into that. If you get us some names, that. that would be great. I know it gets kind of crazy. So if you could get a name, I don't mind calling. Um, next up is um, planning on our Kennesaw Avenue project is almost um, coming to a wrap. We, I did meet with um, the uh, Josh from the county, talked with him about. Um, the header wall on the far side of the of Kennesaw Avenue, which if you're leaving here, it would be on the right-hand side, um, and some wash that I've seen there. Um, I have a meeting with Barry next Friday. I had a family emergency that came up for thir this Thursday, and I couldn't meet with him. So it'll be next Friday. We'll go over that with him and see what needs to, to happen, and then we'll work back with the county to make sure that we shore that up really well. Um, the planning on Kennesaw, the planting on Kennesaw Avenue is almost complete. I don't know if you've had a chance to see it, but it's looking pretty good. And um, any questions on that? I should have been asking you guys that. So, no. No. Um, uh, do you know what time you'll meet with Barry on the Friday? If it's uh, raining uh, or something, yeah. I uh, uh, I said 11.30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said it for, for 11.30. So. I think I'm off at Friday, too. Okay. okay. Um, the other thing that I, I wanted to touch base on is playground equipment. So I made a couple phone calls and uh, things have just really gone up <laughs> in the last two years. So with that said, uh, I, I would like to make a recommendation that we um, give Michael Kidd a call since he is doing our overall master park plan and have him look at that area um, and maybe get with you uh, I've got your drawing still and have him do us a, a drawing and, and what will fit in that space that's what I was wondering yeah and then um, after we do that he can do a drawing for us and then because I have a feeling it's we're, we're you're looking at forty fifty thousand dollars and that's on the very low end very well, that's low what end. I was wondering if you know, the basic designs there there's not a whole lot to it is yeah I actually uh, sat down the other day and wrote up a basically what would be in a bid for it. Mm -hmm. We just set up like a price and then anybody wants to bid for it, they can well, but measure and see what size yeah. will actually, I mean, I think we figured not knowing exactly what we're doing, about 35 by 35 on the square footage, and they can make recommendations along with the bid for equipment, but it's hard to tell looking at those pamphlets I laid back in there. Yeah, they are, it is. That's why I, I, I know Michael Kidd is a, he's a park planner, mm -hmm. so if he could give us a couple of options, we're paying for it anyway, if he could give us a couple of options, and he could probably do that relatively quickly, just we mm -hmm. have the plot, the plat for that piece of property. Get him to give us a couple of recommendations. You guys take a look at it and then see if that's what you want. And then we can contact some of these um, folks and say, hey, you know, we can we can actually put it up for bid. So, I mean, that that's my recommendation. I didn't realize that we were looking. I mean, that that's. Really After good. looking through those booklets, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, it, I called a few people, and it's yeah. just like your basic fifty, sixty thousand dollars just on the one piece of equipment. On exactly. The well, that and. and and little types is really high anyway. Well, that's what I was saying. If we set a like a cap at, you know, the average of that somewhere between probably fifty to seventy, 
put it up and then they can take any of your suppliers, they're going to have yeah. that and walk out there with a the tape measure and say, okay, you've got exactly 36 by 36 <coughs> feet, and here's a list of pieces of equipment that will fit in there. Any of the suppliers can do that probably on their computer. So, so you're suggesting just go ahead and do a bid yeah. based yeah. on and the... Figure out about what we think a cap price would be to stay at. Suppliers don't have they, they do have them, yeah, they do. And, yeah, they should I mean, provide they, that at no cost just to yeah. begin, you know. So okay, we've got these three pieces of equipment that are in yeah. your price range and your size range. Then you look at the bid and go, okay, well, we like that, we'll go with this company. So we can set up a bid. We can go ahead and set up the bid. Um, I'll get you the, because we'll have to get a close estimate on, like, the fencing. The grading's not really going to be a lot. But yeah. I sat down and basically broke it out into pieces we need, so grading, this stuff, this stuff, whatever. Okay. With the wedding and well, everything. Um, oldest just got married and with the wedding and everything, it's been a madhouse. I just got to get it typed up and sent to you. You're like, good. Whenever you can numbers. get that done, then we can get a bid package together. We'll have it before the next meeting. So okay. Or well, I can you get can, it to you sooner than if that. If you can do it, if, if we're all in agreement to, um, to, to go ahead and put this out to bid, we'll do a bid package. Um, we can review it. Like a cap price, a, a target price for the piece of equipment itself. And we can review it. number of benches, swings, yeah. whatever, tables. What type of pants and everything like that in it? Yeah, I was thinking, like I drew up there, to say privacy on the shared wall yeah. with the house and everything, then go with a vinyl coated black chain and yeah. do the rest of it because it'll last longer. Yeah. But we need to yeah. probably get a better yeah. estimate of <coughs> footage. So we'll go with the bid package on, in the June, at the June meeting and then we'll put it out for bid um, right after the meeting. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay. We can decide what we want to say as a like this is the top end for a piece of equipment and they should be able to say, well, we've got five pieces of equipment that fit your size and that price or whatever. I know with it being over $50,000, there's some paperwork and stuff like that. And I, I, like mm -hmm. I said, I just don't want to get, I don't want to do it the right way. I don't want to just go out there and try to spend, you know, I know we said we have the capital, correct? Mm -hmm. um, to spend it if we want to get yes. it out of our, our capital. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's how we said we were going to do it, wasn't it? Did we say we were going to do it out of city funds? Or did we say we're going to do it out of capital or sponsor? It's going to be sponsored. Okay. okay. We, we have sponsored. we have park upgrades. Okay. Sponsored. Sponsored. Okay. We have the, the trail resurfacing. Trail resurfacing is currently out for bid. So once they do that, they'll they can do us a drawing. So we can it'll all be all encompassed. We need to make sure that they do a drawing in there, so they don't have to be submitted. All right. So that covers the playground equipment. Um, uh, the I know that Kelsey put out a um, thing here for Hol uh, Holcomb grading an amendment. I have called the um, I called the GMA. Also found out what we needed to do for the amendments if we needed to uh, what we needed to do. And I found out from our charter. So here's the deal with with the amendment. Just so everybody's on the same page. The concrete for up here. Um, at the police building, because of the weight of it, was an ex extra three thousand. Was it three thousand six hundred dollars in dump fees? So the other thing is, is if we tear down the marble wall, say we take the marble wall, they're they're in sections. What do you guys think about having them? It was three thousand six hundred and fifty-three dollars for in addition, in addition to what he quoted. For just the dump fees, and our dump fees are going up. We need to make sure that we include yeah. that in our budget. Just FYI. Did you see that concrete? It was like. Three. I did. It, it was. You mom. So we get another machine to break it up to get that machine to carry it. That marble is my concern, but if we were to take and save the marble, I mean, I know it was part of the gym, the gymnasium wall. If you save that, we could maybe utilize that marble in our. Um, if we did like a. No, what was, it, what was that thing you were talking about? The, well, you could do the like amphitheater type amphitheater, stuff. Amphitheater, I mean, it's seating. I mean, it's a fairly decent size. It really yeah, it's there. about, it's a good, and I mean, the, the sections are like this long. So we just have to have them take it down and, and place it somewhere and not so it didn't get broken. That'd be hard to do, man, to keep it from getting broken. It's old. Some of it will probably break. Yeah. Some of it. 
might be able to salvage some, some of them. Though. We we thought about maybe giving getting uh, Evan to take it back, but Evan can't run anything dirty through his mm -hmm. through his machine. He said I'd tear them up. Yeah. So I'm gonna say he's like here today too. Go ahead and talk about that. Since we had to say we have safety inspection every year. The, mm -hmm. the Steve, I cannot remember his last name from the GMA. He does our insurance stuff. Was here today, and he came in initially to give ideas for the community building. Realized it had been torn down. It then pointed out the walls and said that they needed to come down. And I told him that was something we had been discussing. And it was just the fact that it had been brought up by the insurance company. So, I guess. So, we'll open it up for discussion. We'll start with Nathan. I'm not comfortable with taking that down unless we're going to immediately fix it back. <clears throat> the, whatever we're going to put in place of it. So, what we had talked about was if we took the wall down, we would slope the wall and slope the stuff, and then you start out with a clean slate. So if he wants to put something back there, and if you come, from what I understand, if you come, if you back it up a little bit and slope it down, you still maintain the integrity of the ball field for right now that's there. You're talking about at the marble wall. At the that marble wall, you have to slope it too. Well, you're talking about. I mean, six, it's, it's six, it's five and a half feet in one area, and it's six, what was it in the other? It's six some few in the other. We just, I went down to the tape measure and looked at it and, and measured it all. I mean, is they planning on bringing dirt in to re-slope that? Or? Yeah, it'll have to be. There's he no way to He said he would re-slope it. Off. So. They plan on going up that side of the sidewalk, do I just, I mean, my perspective, I'm, if he tears the wall out yeah. and then re-degrades it, and then we hire somebody to put another wall in, they're going to have to dig that. I mean, we're going to be paying. I don't think you would be, would you want another wall there? I mean, if you could really slope the whole thing and just not have nothing there. I mean, if you wanted to have something there, you're going to need a wall. That's all I'm talking about. It. You're going to have to have some wall mm -hmm. to save that slab, too. Or the, the lots yeah. Be yeah, you said you could save the back end of the slab, and, and if you sloped it off, you would lose. How much did he say? Maybe a third of the slab, but that's the end that's got all the drainage and all the pipes and stuff in it anyway. It's its front end, so you still have you still have a huge piece of that um, of that concrete. That's still a lot of hoodies, hoodies on, on the back of the slab. <laughs> just like the cleaner than originally recommended. That won't be much The part cleaner originally recommended using part of it as like a pavilion face and part of it as a basketball thing. Mm -hmm. Just to see if it was something that was going to be. But if we go back with a, if we go back with a full basketball court, like what what we're talking about, do a full basketball court. Um, per Mike, he says it's. I mean, with root design, he says it's probably going to be across the street anyway. It's not going to be right there, and only because of the water saturation. You could still leave that slab, a portion of that slab, though, and use it as a pavilion building, and nice and have a nice one. The slab's already bored. I know under the asphalt, the Evans does have he has water lines under that. Evan was down there with Bubba. Yeah. We met him down there the other day, so yeah. he's been kept in a loop of everything. It um, runs right between the basketball go, the basketball <coughs> and the building. There's a, you can actually see some of You can it. actually yeah, see You can see some of it. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, one of those things. Sorry, I didn't like it. Right. It just sounds like we're tearing a building and a wall down and just making a hillside out of it. Well, you're you're really you're really just giving a clean slate for it to come back. That wall's gonna have to come down, whether it comes down today or it comes down in six months. You won't save that wall when you refurb that area and you turn it into something different. The 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 problem with it is, is the marble is not stable. They hit it with a with a. Um, with the lawnmower, and it's not the a whole piece of it off like a good chunk. Just it's, one piece is completely gone, and then where they backed into it, I guess with the lawnmower, it actually. So if you're going to start with, you will have to start fresh anyway. I guess is my thing. And if you've got somebody out there willing to do it now for ten thousand dollars, you said if you did both of them, um, it's better than it's better than putting a bid out, paying for the bid, paying for somebody else to remove it. I seriously doubt 
I do grading and stuff and pay for it all the time for my sites and I don't think you're going to get it for $10,000 to tear it down. This was only because bit. the machinery was already on site. They say 10000 for the marble and the timber. Uh -huh. That's if they're done. And that's while the off here. everything. Yeah. Marble. That's why if you want, want to keep any of the marble, we can. I don't think you benefit any. If we pile it up, because they have hazard these on the back line. My thoughts, too. They're all different sizes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we're going to get, get my marble pile and slip or something. Yeah, yeah, and the way that it is now, and it, with the rain, there's marble <coughs> pieces just sticking up and they're jagged. If somebody falls off there, it's a hazard anyhow. So. One Bob had also pointed out something about how the walls, the building's connected to that current wall on the back side. Yeah. And it may be an issue as they start doing the cleanup, they may start pulling some of that down. From a from a um, from a perspective with what we have here at the city, we're we well <coughs> our rights to do amendment. Um, if we want to purchase exceeding, um, we've got ten thousand there. But as far as the this last project goes, you can do an amendment to a, to a project. And Laura, do you, can you talk down a little bit more? I'd have to look at the, I don't okay. know, contacted well, Jeff about this in advance, no, but I'd, I'd have to look at I, the ordinance. I actually contacted um, Kate Lab at, at, um, at the GMA. She's okay. a SPLOS attorney, so she, and she, that's what she says. She says, you know, we, I think our piece here, it says the city reserves the right to accept or reject any and all covered uh, items covered in the request or portions thereof waived um, formalities re uh, advertised or take such steps deemed necessary and in the best interest of the city. We want to take a look at that. That's all. So this is <coughs> Nelson's. Mm -hmm. It is. And then here's that's the other piece. Yeah, that's, and this is our yeah. That's yeah. from the yeah. bid package. Yeah. That just that's covers us. Three. The bid package. Yeah, and then that's our. Steel, you know, lighter. It's slow, and it needs to put some kind of a deal up in there. Bid and contract documents may contain provisions authorizing the insurance of uh, change orders without necessary, ne without the necessity of additional requests for bid or proposals within the scope of the project when the appropriate when appropriate or necessary in the performance of the contract. Change orders may not be used to evade the purpose of this article. And this so is, is this something that was a, this is something that was already bid, and this is just a change. Yeah, it's just a okay. name. It's just a change. Okay. And well, this, this right here is an add-on. It's an amendment, is what it is. It's just an amendment for the safety of, of um, the thing. It's it is it's like an add. You can call it an add-on, but but the way Sloss looks at it is it's an amendment. So it's an addition to. Yeah. So but this was not bid on. Is what I'm saying. Okay. This was the wrong. It wasn't. It done, and according to. It'd be like a change have, order. Yeah, yeah. That's all it is. It doesn't have to. Be. <laughs> Within the scope. Of so I mean, I, the thing is, if it's if it's necessary to the performance of the project that was already bid. Okay. Yeah. So if it's something that has come up through the performance of an already bid project as a necessity, yeah. um, then then it's permitted. You can't do it just because you want to add something on. But if it's yeah. become necessary because of what has already been bid, yeah. then it's fine to do it as a change order to the initial bid. Yeah. So as long as it's become a necessity because of the existing bid. How do you back that up if somebody was to? Well, that's why they got delay. I mean, you know, change orders are not to be used to evade the purposes of this article. So you're not supposed to just add things into a project that are not a necessary part of the project through this. Those have to go through the bid and voting process. Um, and this would also, the other thing about it is, is the amendment, if it saves the city money in the long run too you can still i mean if, if it and it's all connected it's all right there connected that was the part that kay was telling me so yeah, i think it's the, the yeah. necessary for completion of the or necessary for performance of whatever has already been bid so if it's yeah. become necessary because of the work that's yeah. been done um then it would fall under that as a change order rather than as a new a new bid and a new proposal yeah and I think he knows that he's not going to come out of this making a lot of money because <laughs> he already knows what the dump fees are going to be to dispose of that marble. Oh, so that's still a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know. So what's the well, the initial quote just to do the wind wall, like if his equipment wasn't here and he came out and said that that was like ninety five hundred dollars. 
just the wood went on that one side. Yeah. So this was like his equipment's already here. What's the 10 and the 12? What's the difference? So if you do both at the same time, he's doing them for 10,000. If he if you really if you're, you're only going to do the one at six thousand, and if you don't so. want it done while the stuff's here, then these it's it'll have to just be bid out. So be bid out, and it will be completely different. So he's asking for ten to do both. Yes, and that's including dirt, grading. I don't know if it, I do not know if it includes the dirt. It, it, it includes. He said that it includes the um, slope grading, the, the grading and the slope of the land. Seed and straw. He may so have to bring it. He's figuring he's going to get it to where it's at least seed and straw. Yeah. So I would like to see that wall stay where it's at, though, when we go back to putting a wall in. I don't think that that wall is part of Michael Kidd's thing. I think it just means yeah. a wall where the wall is. What do you, what do you mean? Well, I mean, my wall works for a new wall. Well, he does. He does. That's not the thing. Are you talking about the the concrete wall, I mean the marble wall, or are you talking about the marble wall? The marble wall? Yeah. You don't want to lose flat land. You don't want to, I mean you don't want to give the whole piece of land up and just have no. this out there. So no, I, I agree. What I'm talking about. Okay. We're running out of space. Yeah, we don't have a lot, for sure. Yeah, it would look better if a wall went back there. Yeah, I think it looked to me like it's great where you could end up with probably five or six foot high walls yeah. instead of those. That wall actually, the marble wall, it's actually about three foot out slow where it slopes up to the top of it. If you take it down to the grade, you lose another foot, foot and a half just with that. So that's helpful anyway. Yeah. You come back about three foot away and it's, it's like a swell. Yeah, when we, when we get all this stuff took out, I mean, if this goes through, can we? Prioritize that area. Yeah, it's like yeah, you can. The next project. When Michael comes, um, he's supposed to. Uh, is the next piece he's working on the data the from the survey, so we should. <laughs> and then that's, that's something you guys will decide which phase you want to do first. The thing about this piece of property over here is, um, and it's a working process because it's not just the wall. The wall, of course, is a safety issue. But when you get behind the Rebecca Lodge, there's places where you just bury it in me in it. I mean, it just, you just sink. I fell flat on my face out there. The only issue still is we're going to have to have somebody come in and take out the old basketball court too. I mean, there's just really no saving it. We know that. No, but I mean, if you're doing it in phases, at least they have something until until we do that, right? So that's, I wouldn't take that out until we until we have something. I mean, that's only, I've measured it, it's about, it's about that thick. Mm -hmm. So well, all the dirt from the basketball court area could be moved down and used for the rock wall is because it was originally a bank there, was it not? Yeah. It's probably yeah. gonna get destroyed getting that when that timber wall comes down too. Yeah. If it gets a big track or one. Yeah, they, they should be able to do that at the top. Yeah. Um mm -hmm. I know that we have that um, that piece behind the Rebecca Lodge the, to go in there and clean that out and rip wrap it and make it look a little bit better. So I guess really just take a look at where we've got those things positioned at on the capital improvement as to how we need to do things. I think that would need to be done first and have that land <coughs> raised or whatever right, before you. Time. I think if you grade the land and you that piece back there before you do that storm drain, we're just it's going to happen. What's going on will just continue to happen because it's already up under there. So you think that's going to converge to the storm drain as far as right there, up behind the back of the That's the problem because you're looking at that timeline. You know, is it going to go together? I think really asking, I think maybe doing it together, but we need to just talk to Michael Kidd and get, get a recommendation on it. And, and even Barry, because Barry's going to have to, when he meets with us, to talk about um, Hillside and, and um, Cherokee and, and then into that underneath the railroad track and where that lady's house is at, the hole there. I mean, that's a hole. That's what we dubbed that as one phase now because they all put together. So, I mean, there's a lot of work to be done, no doubt. So, and I think maybe we just take a, get, get a recommendation from Barry, get a recommendation from Michael, and then sit down and just put our heads together and see the best, best way to phase it out. David, you got a lot of knowledge where it comes to uh, grading and stuff, and how
how that end works. We need to be you know, up there and look and see how we're going to do that. The engine's on and down too. Yeah. We need to get both both ends of the meat with them too. Um, we did have, a, I think he might have talked to you because Bo met with us. I think, I don't know at the same time. I don't think Barry was there that day, but we have, I have given them each other's phone numbers. I have had some conversations, so I wanted to make sure they were in the loop as far as what happened on the property. Yeah, because it's going to be on their property. So yeah, they so they were, yeah, they were being kept in it. Okay. Um, any other discussion on this before we go on it? The amendment. We have anything? Hearing what the attorneys represented over said, I don't know if we'll qualify because the other project hasn't caused this. This has been there the whole time. I'm leery. It doesn't After have hearing that. What was the initial bid and approval for? The demolition of the the demolition of the building. the building, but because the wall is an extension of it and it butts up to it, and the building was built on the, the marble wall of it. could be affected by the retaining the wood wall would not be. Totally That's been a problem for me. It's just yeah. been an ongoing problem. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, if the timber wall is not in any way connected to the building, so that you said the marble one does butt up to it, that could potentially be caused by, or you know, if there's been damage to it from taking down the building, or it's a safety hazard from taking down the building, and now it has to come down. If the timber wall is completely unconnected and has not been affected by the other project, then it would it be more of an add-on. Um, it'd be more of a different thing than a change order. So I, I think that's kind of the, the fine line that you're walking on so this one. You can one. do the marble one as part you of it. You could do the marble it. one as far, part of it, and Separate. if he bid the other one, or not didn't bid it, it'd be under $10,000. Yeah, so we don't have to bid that. We don't have to bid the wood wall. We just have to approve it. Yes, but you'd, you'd want him to, he would preferably do them as two separate estimates. Okay. Um, that he, as a part of the initial bid, if it truly is necessary that the marble wall come down because of whatever happened with the building coming down, then that would be a change order to the initial bid. And then he'd want a separate estimate for the timber wall, and if that comes in under your limit, then you don't have to bid it. Yeah, and, and that's what, and that's what one of the things that Kay said, because she says it's, when you pull that off, when you, so the concrete butts right up to the marble. When you pull that off, it's going to pull marble off. And at that point, that is the highest end of that marble wall. So it's slow, it, it's, it gets, you know. So you're potentially causing damage to that wall. You are going to cause damage to structural it. instability to it. And the problem is, is that it's so tall that if somebody falls off there, it's, it is a huge hazard. Well, I think that, that it's connected to the building makes it appear more as something that would be a change order. Yeah. Um, and the potential damage to it, the potential safety hazard. If the, and I'm not envisioning this <laughs> exact area, but if the timber wall is completely separate and hasn't been structurally affected by the building coming down, I mean, if it's fallen over because things shifted when the building came down, that's one thing. But if it's just as it has been, um, it would be less of a change order to the building process. So we would do an amendment for the, so basically we would do an amendment because the <clears throat> the marble wall is attached to the building is the way that it is. I mean, literally it's in front and then we've attached concrete to it and built a building off of it. So if that would be an amendment and then this one here, the... It would just be a separate... That'd be a separate... Just a separate... And a because separate it's estimate. under the 6,000... It's kind of like when he was doing the catch basins and then caught the other sidewalks that were cracked and it was like, hey, we've already got a concrete truck here. If you want it done, then you might. So so for for keeping us for keeping us on the right track. So we if just you're having, going, we would just have him give us two separate bids. Two separate bids. One amendment and one, one that's bid. a change order to the existing bid for the marble wall since it's connected and one bid is just his estimate for um, the wood wall, okay. and, and presumably that's under your limit. It is. 
for it. I think I sent it. Unless his price goes way up when he puts it on the front of his Yeah. <laughs> Um, and it is, it's under the 10, so we, we're safe with both of them. Which I think my thing is, is if we if we push it out and we end up bidding it, we're going to pay for bidding, we're going to have to pay for it to go out to bid, you're going to have to get the, you're going to go through the bid process for, for literally a, a you know, $10,000 job where we can get it done at 6000 or 5000 if we do both of them at the same time. I just don't see anybody coming out and doing it for less than that. And, Based on the pro the process we have to go through, is your language exceeding ten thousand or ten thousand or above? Exceeds ten thousand. Yeah. So you could approve it as it is, not to exceed ten thousand. Yeah. Um, but but I think that I, I think that you're correct that the one that seems to actually be a potential change order is the marble mm -hmm. wall. Um, whereas the other one, if it has not been affected or is not necessary to do something with it yeah. because of the building, um, it, it's more like a separate item. Yeah, and can be done because it's under the ten. Yeah, that was what that was what I was just for clarification on to make sure that we were we were legal. Okay, so. I'll make a note if it goes through. Yeah. Like that. <clears throat> you guys want to make a, you want to take a vote on it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve um, Holcomb Grady, two separate invoices, one for the demo and removal of the timber wall for $5,000 and an amendment to the demo for the marble wall for $5,000. Should I do them separately? Yes, okay. I would get the let's do that. Separately. Let's do the let's do the amendment first. Now we've had and voted on the wooden wall. In fact, it's not turning out. Okay. Mm -hmm. I thought we know we we approved rebuilding it a long time ago. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I get a motion to approve the removal of the marble wall connect that's connected to the Rebecca Lodge as as an amendment for five thousand dollars? I make the motion. James. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Yeah, yeah, this is going to include all grading, all yes, seeding, all the dirt work. We don't know if not it includes. Exceed. We don't know if it includes bringing in dirt. It was um, just whatever was on. Evan Hound told me that the other day that if I needed dirt, he'd give it to me. So if we don't, if it's not included, we'll get the dirt. But he, he told me we'd give it that to him. We need dirt. Was down there. We were talking about. So we were yes. Sylvia Evan I figured you'd have to put it back at least two to one yeah, yeah. to meet that. Yeah, well, and that's what I would assume. I, I mean, I just don't want to come to the next meeting and say he needs five more thousand dollars. No, I understand. That. <laughs> so not to exceed five thousand dollars? That it's only going to be that price of photo for approved. Because if only the marble wall is approved, then it's going to be six. Well, that's correct per his bid. So if y'all approve both yeah. separately, then... Nothing should change on this end. Yeah, I'm just saying that it's if we're only going to do one. Okay. So all in favor? Unanimous. <coughs> uh, James and Nathan. Seconded. Um, can I get a motion to approve the demo of the timber wall, the basketball court, uh, hay and seed, uh, and regrade? Five thousand dollars. Make a motion to approve. Second. David. All in favor? Yeah, that's okay. All right. Um, Miss Miranda, I think that's all I have for me. Miranda, if you would uh, be so kind as to go over the financial report. All right, we'll go over the bank balances, and then, um, of course, we're going to talk about the budget going into um, the actual proposed budget next fiscal year. All right, general fund. Balance is $868,799. The special reserve fund for number three is $39,295. Sploss four, Old Cherokee, is $431,228. Sploss two, which is the Old Pickens, is $401,920. Sploss five, which is the New Cherokee, 
um, is $709,116, and the cash reserve fund is at $166,683. Um, Pickens Falls 2020 is a new Pickens, um, is $492,700, and then the Harris Act grant balance is $83,386. Um, and behind that, you'll have the report of your all the bank statements as well as the recent checker. Um, here, the CARES grant. Mm -hmm. uh, I would. I spoke with a couple of folks on the council about it, but um, we. I, I've done some checking um, in order to give back to the community. Um, we've got four churches and one um, and one school. In, in even if it's private, it doesn't matter. Um, I know some of these churches, um, due to COVID and, and things like that, ha have had a downturn in, in folks and in dollars and things like that because people out of work and stuff, so as far as time and things. Um, they've got some projects that need to be done. I um, believe Vivian and Anthony, they said that they had a project for sh uh, structural that they had that they needed to do on theirs. I know this one over here needs a steeple. Um, and then there's a cemetery project at Bethesda, and I'm not sure about Nelson Baptist yet. Um, I, I would like for you guys to entertain the thought of maybe um, either giving $2,500 to $5,000 to each one of those um, <coughs> churches in the school um, to help with the cost of, of projects that they have going on. This is being done the county. The county is partnering with the school system to give back to the school system to do things that way. Um, it, it is, um, we don't have any businesses, so we don't have any businesses to prop up, so to speak, you know, like um, We really, anything. This too, if we do yeah. it, it's that we still have to track. Like, yeah. we still have to. Report. We have. They have to give us a project. We'd have to report the project back to the to the um, state. And they opened up a lot of stuff when they did the final rule. And, and what was the thing on the ten million? It was. Uh, so I mean, for lost revenue. Yeah, lost revenue, which we don't really have. They lost. made us report as such. Yeah. We don't really have lost revenue, but when we went in to do our paperwork, it wouldn't take anything but that. Well, it took the other two. But it's still made reported as well. Yeah, still made a report as well. So um, it's a good way to, to give back to the community. Um, I think total we got 700 and what was it? 705. Total? Yeah, it's 522 14. Because each tranche is like, is it 211 to 14 each? Here, it was I think it was 211 each. So I think the next one will be 211. So it was like, no, it was more than that because the total is 5 something. Yeah, the first one was two something, and then it opened up five hundred and seventy seven thousand. It did not. Okay. Oh, they give it as half. I think anyway. it was two twenty seven. Each the first charge two twenty seven, the second charge two twenty seven. Because okay. it became I think it's like five fourteen was the total. So that that'd be a half a million. Um, plus is right. what it is, and make a note so we can have that information for the next. Um, I've for got it. In there. Okay, we do have them where when we have our um, executive session. If you want that. Um, anyway, I'd, li I'd like for you guys to think about that. That's really the only places that we have to give back um, to the community in the big scheme of things. It's not that much money um, that you're looking at. You're looking at twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand, depending on what you end up doing. So. Who looks over what's being done and stuff like that? We have to report on it. So yeah. it's something like I just did the report no, on the April 30th. Mm -hmm. no. oh. they I'm not in trouble. No, they have, they would have to basically give us the project and write it out. I mean, it's a business transaction. You get a project, you write it out, they tell us what it is, they show this is the estimate of how much it is, and then the, the council would decide on if you wanted to do a $2,500 donation to that out of the CARES Act or if you want to do the $5,000. I, I per personally think you should do it all across the board. Whatever you give, you do it to everybody. Okay, I'm going to be fair. Yeah, yeah, be fair to everybody. So, but, and I know some of them have come in and specifically asked if we were doing it because their churches were not need for things. So. Yeah, the state will be yeah, well, then yeah, Ms. Blackwell came in and asked for contractors because um, I know they've saved up some money for it, but I know 
I don't know what how much they saved up, but I know that the cost of materials has skyrocketed as well. <laughs> yes. For that eight dollar sheet of plywood. Yeah. So Laura, would would I do a um, would I do a vote on this here to agree to disperse X amount of funds to Did they so did, did, did they have through the grant, do they have requirements for what you would need they for do. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I have to see it's like a five oh one three C or C whatever that yeah. charity thing, like we have to check that. I think churches qualify under that. Yeah. For certain things that we do have to check. And did you have a list of specific um, well, we just know what the needs that some of them have. I know of a structural need that the church here, um, where Vivian and Anthony have, I don't know what the name of that church is. I, I don't know the name of it. What is it? That's what you know. may want to get a comprehensive yeah. list of yeah. places and, okay. then, and then vote on yeah. what the okay. amount is going to be. Yeah. Um, because it would be better if you had a, a list of the number of places yeah. so, you'd be given. And some, some of the churches may not need like an actual project there, because some of it was even open to, to helping with the needs in the community. But it's much easier for a church to help with something like that than it is for a city to help with that, because, you know, we don't know all of the needs, and it's much easier for them to verify that than for us to verify that. Okay, I want to ask you if any requirements, since you were yeah. queen of that whole yeah. CARES Act thing. We'll say no. <laughs> if you get the requirements, yeah. I don't mind reaching out to... You put that in your, your article, too. Okay. <laughs> I need, I need the requirements, and I will also give. I'll get with the churches and see if they'll submit. Um, Something that they could fit a project. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So churches and the school, yeah, and we do have to verify that they're they're doing the charity status, whatever it is. Okay. I'm gonna say those other municipalities that's also done the project. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to the county a little bit, and that's what they were. It was just stuff that was popping up when we were doing the report for on our end when they did the final rule. I think in April that just. It opened the door for a lot of things that they hadn't previously. I think he did a little scope and they located the church. He ate for a mile. Well, the so, county has already funded them. The county the county is already doing it. All, I think with the $2,000 bonuses, the ones that didn't qualify, they took yeah. it out of the other portion of grants to make sure all the employees were getting funded. Yeah. There were articles on the paper on it. So, not that I'm opposed to what you're saying, yeah. but I know the well, county's already doing it. Well, I mean, kids from this community go yes. pick it, land her, keep yes. down the schools also. They could use it for lunches or something like that. I believe states are doing all their lunches right now. I mean, kids don't even have to have none yeah. of their lunches. Yeah. It's Cherokee and, and Pickens. Do your kids have a thing for lunch? I couldn't tell you. Uh, my wife takes <laughs> Yeah. Well, I know that Lily and Ford were both my grandkids. None of them are fat. They don't make lunch. It's just a thing that they're giving for free. But, but yeah, I'll get this and I'll submit something back to you guys. I need some chairs. I need something. That one? Oh. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I think that's an option too. The other thing that we found out too with regards to that CARES Act is that we we were eligible to um, we were eligible to also we, to give all of our employees the thousand dollar bonus, and we gave it to. Oh, it's like up to ten thousand. So it was. Um, we, we did not do Miranda, and we did not do Kelsey, but we did the other. So if you guys. We can talk about that next month, but if that's something that you would like to go ahead and do, we can do that as well. So. And that's all the things that we found out on our on our um, CARES Act stuff. So, all right, now you can finish. Oh, I'm done. We can move on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be moving on to the proposed budget. Okay. okay. Next up is the unfinished business. We don't have anything. And then um, our new business is the proposed budget draft. Okay, so um, basically this is just a preliminary draft. Um, we have, our revenues have really come in substantial this year. And um, loss is obviously up. Um, I don't see, I, I have sent you an email saying that um, picking sets are coming up this year. And I don't see any, there's not been any kind of indications that any of that's going to change as far as percentages. Um, and then insurance premium tax um, is substantially up this year. And I look for that to continue to move forward so based off of um, a percentage and the increase annually. Um, that's where that number comes in. 
So basically this budget um, for the general fund is showing a 3% increase. Um, the only thing, there's multiple things that, inflation obviously is an issue for, across the board. Um, sanitation revenues have increased was another note that I have placed in here. Um, did increase landfill fees. Um, that's obviously, services have, that, that's just increased. Um, and let's see. Um, the audit come in, it was more this year when we paid for it. The um, inner taxes, fire taxes was more. I went ahead and included that in this. Um, what was it this year? It was 116. Well, what it was when they did the amendment, instead of us getting all of the MO. Um, We didn't get it for all of it. We only got the state exemptions. All the MNO exemptions, we only get the state exemptions, which is a nominal difference, like a difference of like $1,000, because I fought with Cherokee County last year about it, and even had the auditor in the middle of it. It when we go back and read it, when the amendment was done, it took it, it changed it from all MNO exemptions to only state exemptions. So it was only a difference of like $1,000. But it's also the, the value of the, the Properties has increased, so you know the millage rate. We're bringing in more than what we were before. So the, the millage rate is set rate. Right? People are paying that for the property taxes, but the taxes of the property taxes have increased because by of the value of the homes is increased. from like ninety-two thousand to one hundred sixteen thousand three years. But it, yes. you also have property tax property or houses in here that were selling for hundred thousand dollars that are now selling for four hundred thousand dollars. Not my fault. Uh, is there any way to sign in the George? No. <laughs> no. How hard does it have to get before we can renegotiate no. any of that? I mean, it's I'm, across the county. I mean, that's like 30000 in three years on us. It's a, yeah, it's, it's across the county. It's, it's set for everybody in the county pays 3.292 right now in the military for the, the tax rate. But their ISO rating in Cherokee County is much better than it is in Pickens County. And until Pickens yeah. can't compete with that, we are much better off dealing with charity because it lowers our homeowners insurance rates. Jeez, well, maybe that won't be long since uh, Tim. And they also provide the services like the fire marshals are like they've already come in and done the safety inspections of all the city buildings. Any of the stuff they found, we've already fixed. The, which is like the safety lights on the exit signs, the building numbers were in the wrong place, new fire hydrant extinguishers we put in. But they do. Um, like the building inspections, especially for commercial buildings, they're involved in one down here. There's a lot of stuff that they add in as part of that agreement. Building inspections, checking for business licenses and permits and all that. We don't have to vote on any of this tonight, do we? we can no, this home actually the, the purpose of this is for you guys to give me a little bit of feedback. Um, there's anything that you see that is, is a concern going forward. I know um, listening to the city events, one of the things I had mentioned is I think we should probably include a little bit more funds yes. as far as covering city events. No, yeah, uh, we, and that, that would be a bad idea. I talked with uh, Kim Bear and, and we thought, you know, since movies uh, happen so late, going to be happening late in the afternoon, maybe we just offer popcorn and candy and you know drinks and they can, that they can buy we don't want to do hot dogs and hamburgers and have all that okay. makes it a lot easier yeah it will yeah. it'll make it a lot easier clean up and most people are going to feed their kids before eight o'clock right there the other things we're going to update is the contingency line on to be within four percent four percent so that'll be a change going forward um the other thing is the salaries if we're going to do cost of living raises or anything like that i'll need to know have a little bit of direction on that i've got i've got that scheduled for our executive session this evening so we should be able to give you some direction on that yeah so we'll, uh, the sanitation department i mean if we we're going to make that across the board yeah we're going to have to increase that if we could do it that's another thing um, sanitation fees at the fees the revenue off that actually come in substantially higher this year because nobody's getting free service anymore. Exactly. So um, if we're not going to call it mandatory until come January yeah. 1, I didn't really factor that in just because of that. Um, yeah. But I mean, if there's anything, if we perceive that, you know, 
rates are going to change or anything like that. The trial cans do come in. We have um, we have a given in. amount. Oh yes, go mm -hmm. take a look at the maintenance the building. Outside. That's what I was it, um, we have been waiting. discussing also. I mean, at some point we are going to have to increase sanitation fees a little bit. I don't think I don't know if they've ever been increased. Yeah. I mean, looking back through the minutes, if anything, I've seen a while. decrease. Personally, I'd like to keep the senior rate where it is possible and then possibly um, increase the regular rate for regular service from $5 a month. And that's still substantially lower than what you're paying the big box companies to come in. These people like me, I don't have one bag of trash a week. That's why I'm like, if we can keep the senior service at $12 bucks a month, that's it's great. And Steve, yes. I mean, if somebody has surgery or something, they go up and they help them with their trash, and you're not going to get that anymore. Now my next door neighbor down there in the curve's got 20 bags. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So balance it out. What I'd like to see, what I'd like to see happen here is everybody take a look at this, um, and then sometime this week, and then email Miranda or text her if there's something uh, a specific area that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. If you guys could do that, that would be awesome. Yeah, or phone call later. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it, another thing that we've brought up on occasion is yeah, the compensation for um, council and mayor. And it can only be done during an election year, but just food for thought. It needs to be increasing. The compensation for mayor and council. As right now, it's it's literally only for the council meetings, and it's 50 bucks. But I know there's also meetings that we have. Somebody is down here numerous times a month with the county. James is down here. You guys are down here if we have meetings with the county. I can't pay you for those. But it's also most cities do it where it's a set rate per month. Like you make X amount of month. The mayor pro tem might make a little more. The mayor makes a little more just because there's other obligations that go with it. Set so up more as a salary. Though. Yes, it's set up more as a salary, but it's um, it can only be done be done during a regular election year. It cannot be done during the middle of the year. There's weird rules to it. So just you can do it anytime. You just can't. Whoever, you, you can't do it till after it's... Yeah, there's just weird rules to it. It can't go in effect until after right. there's been yes. a vote. You can't give yourself a raise, you can give exactly. a future counsel. Yes, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. It just, I mean, it's something that we've kind of discussed off and on, but I do think going forward, everything's moving up this way. There's going to be more responsibility. There's going to be more meetings. There's, you know, y'all have to factor that in. But, when we were one of the last cities to even pay council members, but if you do it as a salary or you know where you can get paid for other meetings, kind of there's days that she has to take off work, there's days that, I mean, James has to take off work, which is his favorite work of all, with mm -hmm. the grandbaby. But there's days that, you know, stuff like that pops up. I know Williams come in, David, Nathan, you know, that just food for thought. So if we kind of look at what other small cities are doing, for the future might just plan for something down the line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. And then the next step is going to be our executive session. Can I get a motion to move to executive session? Make a motion to move to executive session.